plafond. Last player over towards Belong, baited out by the shot, but can he get it right now? He does do this! <laughs> Jake absolutely dancing on them with his U ratio skills. Left with Jess with Knight. And uh, he does find the frag, but Knight, is he gonna check to his left? I don't believe so. And well, he actually does, and he gets the kill. Oh my goodness, Hammers, they're pulling this one back. And here he Oh my goodness! Four frags in their favor. A 2v5 turned to a 2v1. How does this happen time and time again? Absolutely incredible from Hammers. Three more rounds, that's all that separates them from a 13 and zero round comeback. That'd be absolutely incredible for them. But nay, he wants to deny it for them. Frost finds one frag on himself, but Abuse comes back with the spray transfer. And finally, as I say at Elevate, they pick up their first round in 10 rounds. And they're back on like no big mistakes to make, but Snoops does get swatted out and he finds two. Menace now, the last player that has to clutch out for the side of IFL, and I think that bomb's gonna get tapped. The bomb is gonna get, no, he's not gonna get the kill there, and Menace, oh my goodness, what is happening? He tries to pull out his knife. You know, what's gonna happen, because maybe they're, they're, oh, their last teammate, um, you know, had some kind of connection issue, they, they want to try to get back, and they're selling as much time, so they can at least get to uh, level three. Well, you think uh, it's remarkable, but he can't. And that's the A site completely open now. It's gonna have to be up to G2 and Wave coming in. Team Flash, you can see, might buy him a little bit of time there, but Naruto does get shut down, so G2 finds a frag. Wave now, teammate. Bomb has been planted. Right, two versus three. The, the teammate is Wave coming over from that source oh. position, and Arson just walks in the bullets there. Nothing, and G2, three massive frags, and he took on the last. Yes! Oh my goodness, the 4K G2 comes B for S2A here. You can see the nade flies out, scores on into the bomb site, and well, Wave is taken down. G2 is next, and eventually they are ravishing IFL. No player here for IFL defrag, but uh, his teammates are there to support him, so there's not going to be anything from Jake, but what? What just wow. happened? Uh, Knight and Mirzi, they down, it's down to Knight. If he wants to win it out, but Existence, they might take it to round number 25, and Knight, he could close it out right here, simple. Is he going to win it out? No, Hammers, they nice. win it out. Mounted here from that east side, it is Mirzi. Once again, he was very influential over towards Van Halls. Can he flash him off again? Can he do the duty? And he does two, he lines up two. Can he get the third? Huge damage onto the third and Ar and Naruto is going to come back here, finds that M4 and finds it successful right now. It's spray transfer, three massive frags. We're down right now, as you can see here, Glock, he is going to be the first point of contact with Glock. Finds one frag, can he get the second? He does get the second and third as well, and a oh, no! It's actually stolen away by the side of Steer, but still very, very nice. All his utility to stop this push. He does get a good chunk of damage here, but he can't take it. baby. Can he get sketchy? Yes, he does. He buys time now. His teammate has to come in. Agonize. He gets oh. another. A 12 to 4 flags. What is going on right now? Sketchy. He's going to get no kills. Daylight's going to have to ace clutch this one. Sneaking. Oh my goodness. Daylight. He's gonna run all the way around now. He knows he has time and he knows he has this to his advantage. 32 bullets in his magazine still. He's gonna have to ace clutch this. Daylight, an amazing 4K so far. And sneaking. 
is waiting for any push here. This is a game of timing, and if they're going to outsmart each other here, who will outplay one another? Sneak in. Trying to scout out where Daylight might be. There's no clue. Both of these players are within one bullet kills. So you'll see here Daylight. He's slowly creeping around towards A mid. Will Sneak in get the kill? Or will Daylight get it? Daylight, he's gonna win it out! Flying out here from the side. He's been spotted out. Snoop finds one frag. He can get another one. He gets the second quickly on the trick. Should be good. 9 to 8. Breaks the nade, but he spots a couple of players. HG2 throws his HG grenade. He gets a massive amount of damage there. Another frag here on AG2 and the SA58. They are clearing out house. Claw, the last man. Hearts life, 9 to 8, gonna call his rotation out. He finally takes down Claw. Can he take down Code as well? Pop Tarts over out already over towards B long. And the 9 to 8's gonna have to do a lot of damage here. Finds the first frag. Thinks that there might be a second. And Code over with that sniper rifle. Is he gonna jump out? Yes, he's gonna go for the 3k thus far. Can he get the fourth? Yes, he's spinning. Tries to fall back here, but he's gonna get shut out. Pop Tarts somehow doesn't take him down. Trying to run back here from the spawn area as he tries to evade this bullet storm. He's gonna get another frag. He's making this so costly now. The Xenocide, can he get the third? Yes, he does. And Snoop's not. He gets that first frag here. The bomb site already. The pop out gets one frag. He gets two. Finds two more kills. And now IFL, they're just getting shut dead in there, protecting the A bomb site with all of their hearts. So Jiren comes in as well. Pop starts trying to get as much done as he can, but IFL, they're just ravaging this bomb site. But who's gonna win this one out? Elko. It's a one versus one now. Jiren versus Elko, and Elko does get that. Somehow he reloads, but he throws out his gun and he still gets the clutch. I am at a loss for words. What just happened there? Elko reloads his MR96, throws it away, and then gets the P250.
Welcome back, everybody. It's been a bit. It's been a quick minute. We're back here. It's uh, it's the gang here. Sapphire Sky yes. joined, luckily, by... Well, I'm luckily joined by Sapphire Sky. <laughs> I worded that incorrectly, but we're all back here. Words aside, hopefully you all are having a good day, whether it be Friday morning, evening, Saturday morning, wherever you are. It's Friday evening... It, evening afternoon for us so yes. uh, over here in the united states but this is going to be a very very fun match to show off uh this is the critical ops not main tournament anymore final <laughs> tournament for season one guys we've reached critical ops final tournament for season one you have watched so many games up to this point to get to here a lot of these teams have played so many games and we've had three different main tournaments all leading up to this one moment today well and today it's actually going to be a little bit different but sapphire if you want to introduce yourself back to a lot of the folks i know you were there for main tournament but yes. uh you know you might have been on a little hiatus so <laughs> i was i was um so like we said this is basically three months of a grueling gameplay a lot of action has taken place i was uh I took place, uh, or I took part in the July tournament. Um, you guys saw me there, and then there was a hurricane, and then I wasn't able to show up. And then I was on hiatus for August and September, but I am back. And for those of you that might recall, I would do the Valiance tournaments um, a few years ago, or two years ago, actually. So it's good to be back. I love, love, love being here with everybody, and thank you guys so much for having us here. Um, and like I said, it's been like three grueling months. It's July, August, and September. It's been a bunch of weekends filled of excitement. A lot, lots of preparation has gone into this. A lot of sweat, a lot of tears. We have seen a lot of good teams compete and unfortunately not make it through um, to this weekend. But we are here. Hammers, Elevate, S2A, uh, Genocide, and IFL. Um, sorry, not Elevate. Um, well, actually, yeah, they were the ones who ended up being Hammers versus uh, Elevate in the July tournament. Hammers ended up winning there. Um, but these are our four teams. These are our four competitors that are going to be dueling it out this weekend to be the top team. Mark your mic. Ah, my mic's muted. Okay. Well, these four teams, <laughs> Hammers Esports, IFL, Saints to Angels, and Xenocide, they've played so much together. And I think they've actually played against each other quite a bit in these past couple tournaments. Uh, but we actually kind of want to show you guys how have these past couple tournaments been? What is the actual format of the entire series, right? So if you guys look on the screen, you'll see there very clearly for us uh that is the tournament breakdown which is you know the main tournament number one which happened in july main tournament two which happened in august and main tournament three which happened in september so uh it was basically the top eight teams advancing from the qualifiers up into the main tournaments and now we see ourselves here with the final tournament where the team with the most points actually are here and those are the top yes. four teams Definitely. Now let's go ahead and go over the prize uh, pool just for a little bit. The rewards there. It's looking nice and spicy. I saw, I got a, I got a glimpse of that weapon skin. That is so beautiful. The colors, the blue, the orange, like it's just, it's calling out to me. So first place, they go ahead and actually get 2000 um dollars and 20 event cases they have a, this very unique skin that we're going to be showing you in a moment. And it's going to be coveted by, I'm going to say like all of the players um in critical ops second place is going to go ahead and get 800 dollars and 10 event cases third place gets 400 dollars, 10 premium cases fourth place is 300 dollars with 10 uh premium cases as well but like this skin like it, it even says season circuit like that is just so beautiful like the colors and everything it's just like really really cool um, i hope that you guys were able to see that in, uh, <laughs> In a moment Jake, or not, probably not, but either way, we are almost ready to go. There, I do want to talk a little bit about the struggle that these teams have gone through. Um, I know that in July, uh, Hammers, it was Hammers and Elevates. August, it was STA versus Hammers. There we go, folks. There is that skin. Look at that. Isn't that so beautiful? That is such an awesome skin. Um, I'm going to be totally jealous for that. I was like, I, I wish I could be a pro. <laughs> I wish I could be competing for that um but either way yes so it has been quite quite a trip it has been quite a showing i know hammers wasn't i mean they were in the quarterfinals for september but they didn't make it uh all the way to the final uh i guess on sunday 
Um, I know August S two A versus Hammers again, and it's kind of interesting to see that in September, like uh, uh, since the beginning of the of the of the tournament, you see Hammers kind of like slowly go away and IFL slowly rise up. We do have the wild card that is, you know, they have a lot of experience. They have actually all of these four teams do have a lot of experience uh, competing in here. But let's go over a little bit about what we are expected to see, um, Mark. Yeah. So these teams, you can see the format is actually a little bit different for the final tournament itself. We have our two games going on today, which are IFL versus Xenocide and then S2A versus Hammers. The easiest way we can explain this is any game that decides the fate of a team <laughs> will be a best of three. So those loser round number one, as well as the loser finals, those are best of threes. The winner finals um, and the winner round one and the winner round two, or the winners round one is a best of one. So you only mm -hmm. actually be seeing two games today. The grand finals is actually a best of five. So there's a, it's a little bit of a different thing. You can see uh, the actual screen itself is a little less cluttered because we just have less teams going on, but we are giving teams a second chance basically with the losers round one. So the two teams that win today will go on and play the winner's final tomorrow. The two teams that lose tomorrow will play in the loser's round number one. One team will get eliminated from that, and then another team will get eliminated from the loser's finals. And then we'll play the grand finals on Sunday. So that is basically the format of it, ladies and gentlemen. It might seem a little complicated, but we just have a little more variety. Best of ones today, short and sweet and simple. We want to make sure you guys have action-packed for the clops, but also some time to enjoy your weekend, right? So we want to exactly. make sure it gets off positively yeah <laughs> um something to note let's go ahead and and check out the points of every of the teams i know ifl is uh, sitting comfortably at the top with 34 points followed by s2a saints to angel at 29 hammers esports has 26 and xeno side is at 25 and the rest of the teams that were competing merciless and bless i know team absent-minded and also they were the ones who made it to um what's it called the quarterfinals and they just they they or actually, yeah, they made it to the quarterfinals and uh, some of them even made it to the semifinals and it's just, they just needed that extra oomph to go ahead and make it to here. But we do have IFL, S2A, Hammers Esports, and Xeno side. A little bit of history um, that we should probably be discussing on... Um, on the, uh, what's it called? The, the, oh my God, my mind just completely went blank. I don't know what to say anymore. Okay. So IFL, all of these teams have, all of these players have three to four years experience. I am going to say that Zeno is probably the wild card here. They are a lot of like, uh, there are a lot of talented players. Um, we'll see how they do. They're, they're a new fresh team kind of starting coming up. Um, the chemistry, I think is one of their strong suits, but it, it, I'm, I'm really interested to see how they perform. Um, during the first matchup against IFL. Yeah, well, I mean, Xenocide, they kind of actually came in at the last moment. They snuck themselves in because they actually came in and, uh, oh, well, they, they were able to place pretty well. I think they placed second in the last main tournament, number three, that we saw. IFL actually took that win over them, which is why they were actually in first place. But you can see Xenocide there, Claw, Daylight, Nathy. Clutch, Elko, Coat, Code, and Corrupt. They have a wide variety of players that they've seen throughout keeping on the actual uh, on the roster. But you can see there, Daylight and Clutch, those are the two veteran players who've played so many matches with the Xenocide squad. You can see Claw, Nathy, Code, and Coat as well. Those are the players we probably see a lot on their end. And the ratings, I mean, they speak for themselves. You can see Daylight and Clutch, maybe they don't have the highest ratings, but they have the most amount of kills on the entire team, which means they played the most amount of games. They are being very, very, uh, you know, just playing a lot of games actually allows you to be a little more attuned to the small details within the pro scene, right? A lot of these players, they play against similar teams, if not their actual competitors for scrims. So mm -hmm. they'll probably be very aware of those tendencies of their opponents just by playing so many games. So that's something, an advantage they actually have going for them. But on the other side of the docket, we will see IFL here. And you can see on the screen with their statistics, you can see 9 to 8, Mad, Snoops, AG2 as well as Gloxy and Jiren Wave as well playing these matches lots of matches and IFL overall they have more matches played across all the players so you can see they made it a little bit farther in most of their rounds obviously they've played and they've won in the main tournament number three for last month but there's just they have a very star-studded squad across all of their players and well you can see Jiren 9 to 8 I mean those ratings speak for themselves <laughs> and they are uh they're they're looking very deadly coming into this first bracket here 
So indeed they do. Now we did ask the players, we asked the teams a couple of questions and one of them was, what do you think um, their weaknesses are, right? So IFL um, said that there was a lack of communication, coordination. Um, Zeno ended up saying that it was a consistency, the overconfidence, that they get frustrated easily um, when it comes to like the momentum that they start losing it, right? But another question that we did end up asking them was, what was their dream team? And their answer for IFL was that they do not want to change their team. They, Their dream team is themselves. They don't want to go ahead and add anyone. They don't need to add anyone. So what that says to me is that they are willing to stick together whether they win or they lose, which is one of the purposes of like why we started the tournament the way that it is and then having it be in such a point-based system. So even if they don't do well today, which I'm sure that they will, um, it's it's very telling of them that they're willing to work together. They're willing to stick together through the thick and their thin. So we'll see how they compete and how they um, are able to overcome that lack of communication that, say, that they say is one of their weaknesses. And also that coordination. I'm kind of interested to see how with the new update with 1.2, how... Things are actually going to be um, changing throughout. And I think we are ready to go into the map vetoes. Yeah, I think we can actually see the map vetoes on the screen here. Like we said, because it is actually only one map that you guys will be seeing, you see all on the screen is all the bands. So we'll just pull up the first one here. And that's going to be that of IFL banning out port. So they said, get rid of port. We don't want to have that there. Uh, they want to make sure that the map they do play is very tactical. And the next map that's going to be banned out from the side of Xena's side is that of Grounded. So we've seen Grounded quite a bit throughout this tournament. Interesting to not see Grounded out for this first round here. But then I think the next map that we might actually see, Canals. So Canals will be gone out of this map. We we actually haven't seen Canals as much as I thought uh, throughout both of these teams. I think these teams prefer a little bit of Grounded, a little bit of Bureau is from what I've seen from these teams. Um I think IFL, they've, yeah, they like to play grounded, but it's not there. So Bureau, I believe, is the next one that will actually be gone. You can see on the screen there's Xena's side. Got rid of that one. Uh, a map that is actually very frequently played by the North Americans as well as the Europeans here. Um, but on the other side of the docket, IFL, they chose to get rid of, uh, I believe that's Raid. So you can see they are just, uh, they didn't want to play Raid. It, it's not a map that actually was played too frequently by IFL, I believe. Um, and last but not least, I believe Xena's side, they, they banned out Legacy. So you can see on the screen right there, they banned out Legacy, which means the last map has to be that of Plaza. So you guys will be seeing a Plaza today on the actual stream itself. Hopefully you are excited for Plaza because I am. We've certainly seen <laughs> a fair share of comebacks on Plaza. And both of these teams are very, very tenured within the, the map of Plaza. They, I think they've played actually quite a bit, not as much. Uh, Xenocide actually are known for having a very good comeback against that of uh, Merciless in the main tournament number three. So they, they, yeah, they've done a lot of stuff there. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what they can pull out because... Well, Xenocide, they've they've pushed their way out here. IFL kind of the top dogs in this matchup so far. So I'm I'm just excited for this overall. Okay. Yeah, I am too. I also I kinda let's go over and do some predictions. I it's IFL versus Xeno on Plaza. We are playing on the update 1.2, right? So I know that that means changes to Plaza to most of the maps. Um, I, I was looking up, uh, did a little bit of research and I did see that a lot of these map changes actually favor breach and it basically almost a CT nerf, a coalition nerf on this. Um, some of the changes that are going to, that we'll see how it actually comes out, um, you know, to light, there's changes to B site. The crates are shorter and they're penetrable, just like all of the trees in Plaza as well. And another curious question to ask, and this is um, by compliance, actually, because I had a conversation with him about the about Plaza's, uh, the changes. Um, is it still, he asks this question, is it still as strong as before with the crouch and crouch peak at B site? So that's something to see um, definitely in this matchup. Also, there's changes to A long and then Breach actually gains a little bit more ground before being spotted out in alley. So I'm I'm curious to see how all of these, how do, how the changes in 1.2, you obviously have the lighting, you have like the new effects, et cetera, um, that have taken place, but specifically Plaza, and since we are going to be seeing it, I wonder how that is going to be played out today. Now for predictions, IFL and Xeno, I don't know. Like, um, 
they have Zeno has played in some tournaments together, so has IFL. Um, it's it's kind of curious to see like IFL just being able to stick together. They they are working on their synergy building. They're fresh. They they have good chemistry. They want to stay together. Um, again, the lack of communication is something that needs to be worked on. But on the side of Zeno, their consistency, their overconfidence, their frustration can probably get the better of them. So my vote in this case is going to be for IFL. What about yours, Mark? I'm going the opposite. I'm going Zena's side. I believe they actually, uh, looking at their past statistics, if they keep it up, they've actually beat IFL on the map of Plaza. Uh, in, in I believe that was September of the main tournament. So they won 13 to 9, and they beat Merciless as well, 13 11 on a comeback. IFL, they have beat a couple teams. They beat Saints 2 Angels, uh, but that was back in August. And so it's mm -hmm. been a these teams have played and uh obviously the map has changed a bit as well so i'm actually going to go with xena side i think they have a lot going for them they don't really have that much to lose either so i believe xena side is going to win we have a split desk here i don't know if anyone behind <laughs> this wants to talk <clears throat> is he gonna talk he's not gonna talk i don't, think. No. I don't know he's in our ears but he's the one that's controlling it that's a that's the man wadi himself he probably is not gonna say anything but go guys give him a shout out on uh, i want to see hashtag wadi claps for wadi in Hell the actual yeah. chat because he's doing so much for this tournament all behind the scenes uh but you know back to the actual predictions yeah i, I actually <laughs> i believe xenocide is going to win this one it's it's going to be close though and i don't think xenocide is going to get off to a good start if xenocide do get off to a good start though i think they could very single-handedly win this but typically what we've seen xenocide have been pretty slow on the map mm. of plaza and it takes them a while to get rolling here and especially with the best of one there's actually going to be extra pressure on them right because you don't have any mistakes to make you can't do this reverse sweep like it's previously been done before so this will be very very interesting to see and but i do believe we actually somewhat have the map ready it'll be very very fun for you guys to see this new map 1.2 20.0 I am so excited to see this, guys. It released, the update released very recently. I think it was like yesterday. So you guys, you know, they've been playing on this beta, I think, for a bit now. But, you know, it's still a little bit different from what a lot of people are used to. And you guys are going to see these changes. I think that one of the biggest ones, like Sapphire mentioned, is that of the headshot angle over towards B site. That's been patched up. You can't just like do this basically the entire time you can't just yeah. like go up and down bob your head down uh so that's like a, that's going to be a very big one as well and uh, you know the teams they've been practicing on it they've been seeing it a lot of changes with the lighting as well so players are obviously easier to see now so if you guys are aware of the 1.20.0 update there's a lot of good stuff in it a lot of map changes um but yeah, I'm just excited for this. I, I like how we I like how it's a little bit different for once. Not everyone's thinking the same team. So Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. So what would what, okay, so what do you think like Xeno side? Like I know that one of their weaknesses, I think uh, I think it was Coach uh that mentioned that they, they have like a slow start. They have to warm up first, right? So now we do see them there on the side of breach. Now do you think that's going to probably punish them though like if they they don't like jump right off the bat and start like it, like immediately going for it um i think did we actually already start the game i'm sorry yeah we yeah, did I, Woohoo! I let's go we started the game so yeah <laughs> let, let's get right on into it it's gonna be ifl versus xenocide for the first map and you can see here xenocide on the breach side they're just going fast on in but mad he just absolutely exterminates them elko the last man standing can't even get the kill and wave also finishes him off a 4k for mad to start off the round what an amazing start for them and you can see there it's a little bit different as well the screen goes dark when they actually are dying it's not just red right now so we've made a lot of changes on the side of critical force or the critical force team has actually made a lot of changes i don't i don't make any of these changes but uh <laughs> yeah ifl what a what a strong start to their side they obviously were able to shut down Xenocide. side that heavy mid presence did not work out for them so Xenocide, they're going to try and adapt and go over towards b this time mid didn't work out too heavy in their favor so trying out their uh, stakes over towards b long it's going to be nine to eight to be challenged here heavy presence from him but he's going to get two possibly three that's the third for him daylight comes in from house and no he doesn't kill him gloxy comes in with the p250 to close it off Oh my god, that positioning by ISL was perfect as Xenozad had no chance whatsoever to come in there. They maybe would have approached it a little bit slower perhaps instead of just rushing in a little bit, but it was definitely not in their favor at all. Um, IFL still with that strong um, last game and they're, they're going to be doing pretty good right now. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, they're... they're... 
<laughs> I forgot. What, um, they're making me uh, sound really good by saying that I picked them. Yeah, we'll see if Xenocide can uh, pull it back right now. You can see this, uh, the little, a little bit of a interesting animation there by by Claw trying to do as much as he can. But Snoops has the MP7 close angle right now. This is a little bit of a different. A you can see the door right there. This has been added on mainly by Snoops. He's gonna come out too. No, not too, but damage almost done for that third kill and IFL actually come back for him so the three versus three health heavily favoring IFL though nine to eight can't find the frag just yet damage done on the code but he can't get anything done code with two kills and Gloxy now the last man standing still has more HP than all of them combined though coat claw and code the three C's the triple C's against Gloxy he's gonna have to do it all but the SA-58, he's on the site already. Will they clear him out? Will they be have the opportunity? No, oh, Code goes down. He's the highest HP player, and there goes Claw as well. Now Coat, the last man standing. A one versus one. Gloxy has to play this to perfection. One of the things that he said that was, was was his weaknesses was his consistency. But right now he has been on fire. And for these for this third round, all he has to do and he he he's able to really predict really well where Xenocide is. And it's coat versus Gloxy. But being that coat is just bomb planting is the bomb right now, he's still able to go ahead and completely kill him off. And he just has to go ahead and rush in, take care of him, and you know, um, just take care of the bomb. That's it. But is he like? I think he thinks that Code has probably full health, so he's approaching it a little too slow for my liking. Um, again, you don't always want to just rush in there because... Oh my god, there! He's looked perfect. Headshot right there. Done. There you go, Gloxy. He knows he had the health advantage. I I, I think he, he just came in guns guns blazing a little bit slowly, though. So he, he was able to utilize that new position, right? He walked over towards the headshot angle without the actual... Uh, headshot to be seen so he had that cover from behind he was able to play that positioning so IFL off to their third round now and Xenocide, side they're gonna have to start getting some momentum on because it's fourteen hundred dollars in their bank versus the nineteen hundred for IFL and this is definitely a place where they have to shine so Xenocide, side the full buys do come in on both sides I'm, I I feel like they have to play it a little bit slower. They have to be a little bit more careful with what they're doing. Their positioning, IFL is able to really read where they are um, to predict where they're going to be and where they're going to appear. And it seems like IFL is ready to, for the for those pre shots. You know, um, Zeno said maybe should stay behind, but they have to you know make a decision and actually stick to a side. It's either B or A. And if they let too much time pass by, they might not be able to even plant the bomb there. Yeah, well, I, I think they're actually just right now going for map control. They're just trying to see where can they scout out the IFL players. And Matt, he can't get anything done. He actually takes the brunt of the damage there. The nade doesn't finish him off. It whizzes past his head, but still, he's been alerted of their position, and, and so have they as well. So, he decides they've been spot out Gloxy. He does a lot of damage on the code and coat, though. So, fire coming back. No player's dead just yet, but Snoops could change that just at this moment. He spots out Elko with a nice headshot, and Elko was full health as well. So now Coat and Code, they are low on their side, and Xenocide, they've been having trouble getting onto these bomb sites with 30 seconds left. It looks like they're going to have to commit over towards B, and Snoops has been playing this angle to perfection thus far, just delaying their push. Daylight, he can't really do anything, but he finally takes down Snoops, and now the B bomb site looks like it might actually be open for the taking. Somehow, Xenocide, they're making it work. Gloxy, the last man standing, a one versus four. This one has to be tough. He was able to do the one versus three, but he can't. Actually, he does get the first right. That's a low HP player. The second, can he get the third? Yes, the third. Just one left. Can he do it time and time again? Oh he has one God. HP versus Code. This is a seven to zero on his on his score record actually right now, and he has to take down that of Code. But Boxy, can he do it? No, he can't. Denied <laughs> by Code at the last second. Wow. Oh my goodness, Xenocide, They finally pick up the first round, but Gloxy, he gave it all he had. Just wasn't enough though oh my god that was probably terrifying for him having that little bit of health and not really knowing um you know peeking around the corners seeing him there missing those shots and coach just finally finished him off with that um last shot and you know he ended up finally giving the win over to xeno side in that last round so here we are in round number five again um ifl is leading um by two and uh slowly creeping 
into the site. Um, I, again, they're trying to go for map control. They're not really picking a side yet. They're trying to figure out where everybody is. And they're just right around the corner, Snoops. Take a look, take a look. He hears them, throws a grenade. I think they've revealed their position. Effective, but Matt, actually, he comes down. The P90 snooping down just like a... Chilling like a villain. He grabs one and Snoops does as well. Xenocide. IFL, they want to make sure Xenocide's one round was a fluke, but Daylight, he's able to answer back one frag on the other side of the map. And so you can see Wave and Gloxy. They're the ones holding down the mid area on the A site. It's going to be Snoops and 928 to hold down B, but Xenocide with 45 seconds left on the clock. They're going to have to make a move quickly, and Gloxy is going to be their biggest obstacle to overcome. He finds the first. Can he get the second? No, he can't. Daylight comes in Claw as well. They've opened this back up to a two versus two. They've slowed it down just a bit. 30 seconds left on the clock. They still have time to rotate over towards B if they like, and it seems like that's where they're going towards. That's where their head might be at. You can see Snoops playing over towards that spawn position. He's going to have to be the one defender to close it out, but... Time, still enough for them to plant. They're just going to have to make no mistakes. Snoops, he could deny the bomb plant. If he does, that's going to be the end of the round here as Claw does take him down. He eradicates that defense. And now the bomb should be able to go down cleanly. But Wave, he's trying to shoot there. He's trying to take down the bomb plant. He can't get any done just yet. But now he's going to go for the flashbang. He's in a dire spot right now. Daylight does shut him out. So it was a good attempt by Wave, but nothing else he could do. I think he was probably losing a little bit of focus and he didn't know. I, I like was it left, right? I don't know who to aim first. You know, somebody peeked over here, but I have a chance over there. Like, should I take it? And he did. And again, he just wasn't uh connecting those shots. But wave. Yeah, wave is uh he's he's been doing some good work, Loxy as well, but Xena's side, they look like they want to actually post up a couple rounds here, Snoops. He's supposed to up with the shotguns and the double shotguns. 9 to 8 is mad. They seem to be doing a good amount of work. 9 to 8, he's finally taken out, but Snoop's playing around that corner over towards Belong. That is a perfect corner to be playing with the shotgun. And you can see Xenocide. They want to go a little bit further away. They know the shotguns are close up, and they know they have to play far back if they want to avoid the wrath of the FP6. Elko, though, he might be the next victim. He's going to fall to the FP6 of Mad. Mad, he's just jumping around trying to get a frag if he can, but. It is that of a four versus three now. Somehow, the four spy from IFO looking to turn in their favor. And Xenocide, they actually want to go and tie this round up. But you can see players from IFO spread out. You can see Snoops, though. He's just patrolling the B-Long area. He doesn't spawn anything out, so he's going to fall back. But IFO, they're really just trying to buy time right now. Just trying to make sure that for as long as they can, they delay the push from Xenocide because... With 30 seconds left, or 35 seconds left on the clock, Xenocide will have to push out. And Kaloxy, he shuts them down. Both from the A mid area. He sees their wave. Can he get anything done? No. Code comes in. And he has to do the one versus four. But 20 seconds left. They shouldn't give him anything. And they're going to convert them to just now. Mad, what is going on? It took him a bit, but he finally <laughs> got the kill on the code. So. IFL, no worries for them. They do convert the eco round though, so that's very positive for them. And Gloxy, you can see, sitting at the top, 10 and 2, code on the other side of things, but it's still IFL to be on a very strong start so far. Yeah, indeed, a strong start uh, still continuing on. But Xenocide is able to take two rounds off of them, and they're starting to be a little bit more uh, cautious in their gameplay. They're taking their time. They're really trying to figure out where IFL is positioned. And once they know, they're not afraid to go in there. And it's probably not going to do them so much <laughs> help right now because they've already lost uh, one and one, though. So One and one trade is actually pretty good for them, I would say. Xenocide right now just... I mean, Claw bought out, but... He has a good amount of money still in the reserves, so he's going to try and use that to his advantage. It's going to be out of coat, though. Does find the frag. The GSR, so a four versus three. Xenocide, they're actually looking to eco IFL back with their lack of weaponry. They're saying it doesn't actually matter. Frag, though, does almost come out on the Elko. You can see 928 is the anchor on the B site. He's going to have a lot to do. Elko creeps up with the AK, but 928 finds that first frag. It is this duel right here. Can Snoops take him down? Yes. Elko's taken down, and now they don't really have pressure anymore, and they've lost it all. 928 with the 3K comes in, cleans shop, 
and IFL, they hold strong. It looked a little bit sketchy for them in the beginning, but Zena side weren't able to get anything done in IFL. Well, they make sure their defenses are strong. So I'm a little bit concerned. Um, it's probably still a little too early to tell, but I am concerned that Xenocide has only been able to get two rounds, and this is supposed to be uh, a map that favors Breach a little bit more. Um, I I don't know exactly what Xenocide has to do. They 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 seem to be getting the positioning right, but they're just not connecting those shots. I wonder if their communication perhaps is also um, falling a little bit behind. Are they starting to get frustrated? This is uh you know these players do have experience playing tournaments. Um, they have I think uh, overall collectively three years. Some of them are, are two um have two years experience, but the chemistry they are a wild card. So we're seeing what they can possibly bring out here. Coat, yeah, well, they've they've taken so much damage. The nades over towards B long were highly effective. And Xenocide, without even seeing a single player from IFL, IFL hasn't taken a bit of damage. Look at how much HP Xenocide's players have. This is terrible for Xenocide to start a round off like this with a minute left in the mid round. They're gonna have to adjust very quickly because this is spells a disaster with Coat less than 20 HP. Well, he's just gonna get taken down too, and he was one of the higher HP players as well. Xenocide have not been able to get anything down here. IFL taking absolutely all the advantages in their favor, and the nade usage has been extraordinary from IFL. Gloxy mad, touching off coat and code right now, and Elko can't get anything done. Daylight finally finds a frag on the Gloxy, but IFL, they've held strong here. It's been very successful for them as, as they move on to picking up the number six. Yeah, um, it seems like they're just patiently waiting for those uh, mistakes to be made on the side of Xenocide, and they're definitely capitalizing on those um, errors, those small little tidbits. It could be just a, a, a misclick here, overextending by a foot, uh, revealing their position, and IFL completely capitalizes on those mistakes that, that are being made by Xenocide. Um, they're also able to determine where they're going to be again, so they're able to pre-shoot um, towards uh, or at Xenocide. And uh, <laughs> well, look how much damage Elko's already taken already. Once again, they finally get into the bomb or over towards a mid, but it takes him so long and they have so much damage taken before they even get over to a bomb site. So, this is something Xenocide definitely have to address. Wave though, he's holding down the bomb site for that of IFL and Xenocide. They're just stuck over towards a long code though. Last person standing, he's gonna have to do the one versus three clutch. It's not going to be easy. Snoops does try the pre-fire, but Code has the AK. Anything done? No, he's going to get shot through the smoke. And yeah, they have to avoid this early nade damage. They've taken so much of it every single round. And we have to keep an eye on their HP throughout the, the, the early stages of the round because it's not been working out for them. So their consistency is suffering. They're, 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 I don't know how to say it, but their consistency isn't uh, up to par. They're being a little bit perhaps overconfident for some of these moves, so that's why they start overextending. But I can feel their frustration almost uh, coming across here, and maybe that's why they're starting to make those mistakes. They're, they're losing that consistency. They are getting overconfident. They are overextending. And then I feel like it's a snowball from here. Um, if they're not able to pick themselves up, I feel like they should kind of like refresh restart but it's hard it's hard to do that at a, at a tournament at this caliber gloxy yeah. ends up taking away coat and coat was one of the strongest players so um i don't know we'll see i actually don't think they're getting overconfident i think they're overconfident they're not taking the duels together they're not relying on their teammates and you can see all the kills are very individual from xenocide so they've been very, very much so disjointed. I think it's the it's the lack of clear communication maybe on their side. Obviously, we can't tell, so we can't confirm that. But you can see Cody just tries to take the fight on his own. No help from his teammate. And even though when his teammate does speak, still not able to win out that dual claw. Knows his doom is inevitable from behind. So he's probably going to get shut down here by Snoops. But Snoops has the cognizance to actually sit and wait. Same with Gloxy. They're just going to... See if they can push out. They know he's low, though, so Glocks is going to take him down. Xenocide, this is what we're talking about, the slow starts. And if this seems to happen, well, if they pick up the last two, it will be competitive. But if it's a 10-2 half, I think IFL might have taken the cake here. I agree. Um, IFL just keep doing what they're doing. Um, they've been patiently waiting, like just like we saw. They're... they're there's well there's isn't really much that a person can do when they're you know caught against a, a rock in a hard place right um you can probably try for the best but there's like you know when you have two people against one it, 
more than likely just the IFL is going to pick up the refrag as we just saw um, in the previous round. Yeah, the IFL has been very good at trading out, and, and once again, it comes down to the utility usage, so it does have to be Xenocide to, to take these fights together. They've been smoked out over towards B-Long, you can see there, but try and approach the best he can over towards this area you can see you know what i would like to on. see i would i would like to see probably either a full a rush by all five players even though because you do have ifl spread out a little bit across the map you know what i mean by the time anyone that's at b side you know at the far end make it over to a they might actually get a plan and if they're able to like hold it down you know, side finally they might actually have one of their special rounds here where they can pick one up it does look somewhat successful for them so far but mad he's low and those snoops get dropped as well they, they're finally getting some traction here it's the plays from the trade frags now so wave last man standing they just need to make sure they clear out the bomb site and then they'll go for the bomb point here but yeah it was like you mentioned it's it has to be Xenocide to play together. They have to go for that rush, and that's what really worked. They just went all together over towards B just now, and that's what they were able to close it out. So winning their duels finally. This should be a third round for them if Wave isn't able to clutch. Don't believe he should, but there we go. Yeah, he, yeah. he cleans it up, and yeah, if Xenocide pick up a fourth round, that could be good for them or that will obviously that will be good for them but it will bring some momentum in their favor going into the second half i think that's what they need because ifl has also been playing very patiently they've been playing kind of like a almost a cat and mouse game but if they i think xenocide probably has to start doing some rushes start playing it a little bit more aggressive um they're probably playing it i feel like they're playing it a little bit too safe um aggression here might actually be in their favor back just a little bit trying to spank through the smokes and see what type of recon they can get maybe hear some bullets going into the skin of the coalition but they don't hear that just yet i don't know i think he heard it i think matt knows a bit there matt, matt has to know those nades definitely signal some presence over towards mid but once again, it comes down to the mid and late round from Xenocide. A minute left in the clock, and the round is halfway over. Most of the players still have all of their HP as well in this server. So Coat, the only man a little bit down, but Xenocide, the bombs dropped over towards B long. I think you can see Coat. He's going to see what he can do over towards A mid, but there's no real distinct plan, it seems. It, it seems I'm a little bit disjointed right now. Do you think maybe they're a little bit scared to approach a site? Like they don't want to get caught off guard, I think. Well, yeah. it, it really feels like they're trying to find a mistake from IFL, but IFL, they're not making mistakes right now. Matt, he gets caught off guard finally, but Snoops, he has that sniper rifle. He can't deny vision, and the bomb is actually going to make its way on over towards the B-bomb site. So finally, you can see this A mid player is going to be doing some damage now, but 12 seconds left. They can't make a mistake. They have to go get this bomb plant down, and Elko... Mm -hmm. He is going to secure the bomb plant for them. Snoops the been can't deny it just yet, but he could be able to get a frag. Coat, though, comes in from behind and blocks the last man standing, but not able to do anything. So Xenocide, they finally pick up the fourth round here, and that's that's a little bit for them. So we'll see how can they actually recover from this one if they can recover at all. I think this pistol round is a must win. They have to actually get this one out or else it won't really be uh, a chance for them. I think IFL will take it away if they win out this pistol round. So I believe I'm probably being a little bit too anxious. Maybe I want to see a little bit more action. And I think um, that last uh, last round that we saw Xenocide played it perfectly well. You know, they they took their time. They really were being patient to see if IFL made a, a, any type of, of mistake. And it's not that IFL actually made a mistake or anything, but they were just, you know, they were overpowered and they made a decision. And there you see, I think it was, um, I forgot who had it. Was it Elko? He had the bomb and he crawled his way towards B while his other teammates served as a distraction for um, for the rest of IFL. So that was good on their part. This is an interesting strat. <laughs> this is very... Xenocide just sat over towards Square and, and they were hoping IFL came out. IFL, well, they're 
probably actually going to make their way on over towards mid. So maybe that strat might have worked had they just stayed there a little <laughs> bit longer. But yeah, this is this is certainly an interesting pistol round. Not not one we've seen normally. You normally we see those B long pushes pretty heavily, but I think Daylight is going to call to his team. He's seen a couple players over towards mid, and obviously if they're not pushing over towards him, they're pushing over towards the deep bomb site, and he can spot a couple players out. Spots one Gloxy does get taken on a bit low, and if they take down Gloxy, he's been a very potent player, a pertinent player, at least for the side of IFL, but they're certainly falling right now. Xenocide, they've gotten the players pretty low, but they can't get the kills. They can't convert. 9 to 8 wave and mad all low, but still the bomb is going to go down for IFL. And can they recover from this one? Coat has to find two frags, and he's only able to find one. Code now low on HP. IFL look to take their ninth round. And this would be certainly a killing blow for Xenocide as it looks like it'd be difficult to recover from this one. Code, his position known. His HP low and his life not there. Snoops takes him down. And IFL, ninth round for them. Xenocide, this is looking dire for them. Dire indeed. Uh, I don't know. They really needed to get that uh, economy up with by winning that pistol round. Um, probably get a little bit more uh, utility usage out of it and stuff. But unfortunately, they weren't able to secure it. Um, I wonder if they're going to try to do that same thing again. Um, they obviously shouldn't be a little bit too forceful against IFL. IFL should be, you know, choosing the side and rushing. Like, they're covering A again, uh, Xeno side. <laughs> Sometimes I wish, like, I, I, I wonder, like, I wonder what happened if, like, you know, Xeno side is just hanging out at A, at a and IFL just goes straight to B, and it looks like it's going to be an A push. Um, it should go to B now, yeah. Yeah, that's what they did. I, I was like, you're talking right about it, and that's what's happening. They spotted a couple players over towards A. <laughs> so they just went B. They're like, all right, well, yeah. we're going to avoid that. You can try and truck through an obstacle, or you can avoid the obstacle. And IFL chose the latter, so they didn't want to deal with any of this resistance. And they able to get the bomb plant down. Getting a bomb plant is very crucial, regardless of if you're going to win the round or not, because that's an extra 800 bucks for the players. So that's good Great money for them. Or... No, I think I'm doing yeah. that wrong. No, no, no. It's, it's still it's still yeah. money for the people who plant. Oh. I think it's it's eleven hundred for the for the planter and then eight hundred for the rest of the team. I believe. I think that's how it goes. Maybe maybe I'm just my math is wrong. I don't know. It's too late in the day for me to be doing <laughs> math. It, we're commentators. We're not mathematicians. And by <laughs> mathematicians, I mean we can also can't do basic algebra. It's okay. It's What's okay. Algebra? IFL. They're gonna have to. <laughs> Well, the algebra in their head is three more <laughs> rounds, and then we win. So, True. Xenocide, their algebra is a little harder. Claw, he does get taken down, though, so he's not going to be doing math anytime soon. And Xenocide, even on their coalition side, it's been tough. Coach he can't get the kill. He has the HK as well, and he still wasn't able to get a daylight. Can he fall back? No, we can't even fall back. It's a two versus four now. Code finally finds a frag. He's going to be able to retreat, but it's looking so desperate. Elko sits underneath the house position and if wave jumps down and actually pre-fires him he is done for Elko, he, he, oh my goodness he gets swatted out absolutely demolished with the m4 somehow wasn't hurt out i think he was playing the anti-flash but code now his presence is known and they're gonna try and hunt for him you can see mad just making his regular rotation over towards this a bomb site and code he's been heard Wave, can he spot him out? Yes, he does. He takes him out. IFL, two rounds away from closing this one out and making this such a fast match for us. I feel like they're just concentrating on... on they should spread themselves out a little bit more, just like IFL was, getting those covers, um, those angles, uh, peaking at the right moments, trying to um, make the right calls. Um, I feel like maybe they're just like, completely frustrated. They, they, they're lacking that confidence, and it is showing... Um, very clearly now uh they do have that chemistry though but i just feel like everything is just falling apart um right in front of them and um uh, you can see it like it, it's it's i feel like they're just all over the place and now they're here a little bit more spread out yes they have you know two on b three on a um it's a little bit harder for ifl to break through but ultimately if they if ifl like hangs out together and like break I, I think they're able to break through the wall basically um They've been yeah. landing their shots. They've been connecting their shots a lot more than Xenocide has. Yeah, Xenocide, they've just been... I mean, you can see right now, it's a five versus basically three. Claw has no HP, and 
Xenocide have just been absolutely destructed or absolutely destroyed both on the coalition side and the breach side. So they haven't been able to find the rhythm, and this round is one they'd have to get if they want to make a comeback. I don't think with 12 rounds on the board for IFL, they'd be able to come back from this. It would be very, very difficult, to say the least. Not impossible, so, but difficult. I, I would say, yeah, very difficult. <laughs> That's definitely true. So You'll see here, Code, he does get shut down, and this is definitely not looking good for them. The sniper rifle does not ring true, but finally it does. Snoops actually takes him down, and Claw, no HP left, wins. no life left. And IFL, they are basically going to win this game, I will predict, 13-4. to 4, Unless Xenocide bring back a couple rounds and, and start swinging the momentum in their favor. I'm, I'm also going to say it's 13-4. to 4. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with you on that. Um, again, just patiently wait it out on the side of, of IFL. Wait for those mistakes uh, to be made by Xenocide and just pick them off slowly as they have been. We have Claw here approaching um, IFL District trying to do... Uh, I don't know, he threw just, what, a grenade? Trying to see if he could spot anybody out? But no. Not really. Not really, but Elko finally finds success early on. This is one of the first few times Xenocide have had the kill advantage in their favor within this matchup. IFL typically are the ones to find that frag, utilizing their utility, those smokes, those nades, devastating, ravaging Xenocide. But it is IFL to still be able to recover despite having a man down. They have been known to come back from this, so... We shall see how they recover. It is heavy presence over towards a mid now from IFL. The three players from Zenith said they're going to have to do a lot of work here. It's Elko, Claw, and Code. And no one's peeked out just yet, but Elko's positioning definitely favors him. He takes on Wave early on and could spot out that of Mad, but like, nope, Code gets to shut down. And now Elko, not on the site, but Claw is. He's got to do a lot of work here. Maybe he spot out the head. I think he spot out the head, yes. But now they know where he is. Surely they're going to pre-fire him. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do not take down Claw. The retake trying to come in here, but it's getting destroyed. And now Elko, the last man standing. Somehow, IFL come back with the four versus five, and they come back to win the game as well. Unfortunate that crash happened on our end, but still very, very positive for them. And you can see IFL, well... That is them moving on to the winner's final tomorrow. Xenocide unable to get anything done. They'll play in the loser's final tomorrow as well. So it, that was a rough game for Xenocide. They, they definitely have to pick it up, but props to IFL for being able to really come back from that and, and really uh, play strong. Stay tuned, everyone. We are going to be coming back for the next match, which is Hammers versus S2A. So this will be a very fun matchup, just to say the least. But uh, yeah, I think we will head on over to a break pretty soon. Yep. We'll be back soon. Don't go anywhere.
side. It's gonna get dated down there. A little bit of damage on the handle. Pinky goes fast on the flank. And Saidi gets two massive frags there. Allows for his team to come in. Now Saidi's gonna be able to get the 4K. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to match number two of the Critical Ops final tournament for North America. We just had a Yay. very quick, yeah, very, very quick decider match that, uh, or the first match at least of the upper bracket uh, that was IFL pretty single handedly taking care of uh, Zenith side. But this <laughs> next matchup, I think it will be a little closer. Don't, don't you think, Sapphire? I agree. Hammers Esports versus S2A Saints 2 Angels. Now, a little bit about Hammers Esports. They have been in uh, tournaments already for maybe the good part of... Or these players, at least individually, have been a part of tournaments for the last four years. They're very experienced. I would even go as far as to call them veterans of the game. And S2A, they also have about three to four years experience. They have played in several tournament tournaments again as players individually but this is actually a new lineup that we new lineup that we are seeing um a lot a little bit of their faults um could probably be that they are just basically a new team but because they are new they are i'm sure full of surprises so if we just want to go ahead and go over hammers esports and um the players individually i know mirzi is at the top with 320 kills with a rating of 1.09. And you have Trax, Almighty Frost, Jake, Knight, Erupt, and Nicole. Um, pretty strong player lineup for sure. Knight, you've seen him in the cover several tournaments. You've also seen Mirzi and uh, Frost as well. You've seen all these players um, play really, really good together. They have really great uh, chemistry. They have great synergy. Um, one of their weaknesses, however, could be that they have uh, miscommunication sometimes between them. They're not that they have a lack of communication, but it's just misunderstanding between them. And then also that they tend to overextend. You know, they, can, they tend to get a little bit too overconfident. They end up being a little bit aggressive and they make those simple mistakes. Um, even veteran players. Um, one of the things that Knight ended up saying was that he uh, is an old gun and he cannot keep up with the new guns. And now that S2A is basically a new lineup, they are not new players, but they are a new lineup playing together. Um, we'll see how, how they end up competing on them. But uh, you want to go over S2A? Yeah, on the other side of the docket, we have that of S2A. You can see a lot of names are still very familiar. Menace, Observes, Plasm, Tau, and Boomy, but definitely a little less on their side. I believe Hammers Esports, like you said, they have some of the seasoned players. So uh, S2A, their numbers also don't lie, but they, they just have a little bit of uh, chemistry they have to get together. They, I don't think they've been playing as long as Hammers, even though they have been in uh, the community for a while now, but still. There's a lot to discuss there. I do believe, though, we are going to jump to the map vetoes just a little bit just to check out how these two teams are going to end up playing. Once again, a reminder that these two teams, it is a best of one. So you see on the screen, ban, 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 ban. <laughs> Basically, it means only one team is going to, or you're only going to be seeing one map. And I mean, immediately right off the bat, you can see on your screen if, I, I mean, I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but uh I think you can see on the screen there, Plaza's gone already. So we're not going to see Plaza for this time. You will see a different map today. And you'll see on the other side of things, Raid, it's banned. It's out. No more Raid either. And no more that of Port either. So Hammers Esports, they're going to take out Port. Raid has been gone and uh, Plaza's also gone. So Legacy is gotten rid of. I believe there's only a couple maps left now. We're left to Bureau or Canals. And uh, well, Canals is gone. And so I think we have grounded in Bureau. So that leaves us with just Bureau. That is a, a very, very nice map, I think. Yeah. I can already, I, I feel the anxiety, the stress is just going through my body because I do think that this is going to be a much closer matchup versus uh, that we had seen uh, previously versus IFL and uh, Xenocide, Hammers Esports, and S2A. They have been. Um, competing the last three months. We did not see Hammers uh, in the... We did see them in the quarterfinals, but we didn't see them in the finals uh, last month. They started off really, really strong 
um, in July, which is our main tournament number one. And they actually fought against S2A, but they ended up uh, beating S2A in the semifinals. And then we see S2A again in the semifinals in tournament number two. And we don't see them in tournament number three. For me, my predictions, I am going to go for Hammers Esports in, in this case because they are just an excellent team. Um, in, in my opinion, like I said, they are great individually and they know how to... Um, how do I say they, they, they know again, like pre shooting, pre firing is really, really important in bureau. They know their angles really well as well. They know their position positioning and on S two A side. Yes. Um, they are a strong team collectively, but again, they don't are have, how long have they really been playing together? And you know, this is something that hammers has an advantage over S two A. So my prediction is going to be for hammers esports. I'm going to go for the same as well. I think Hammers Esports are going to win. They've played actually in a best of three before, and Hammers were able to win that. They had a huge comeback on the map of Bureau as well versus that of S2A. But without further ado, I believe we're getting right on live into this match. If you can see on the screen there, Hammers Esports are just going fast over towards B in the map. Well, no players from S2A are actually over towards B. So you can see there, just waiting for the retake s2a they're gonna have to do this one flawlessly it's gonna be tough the bomb has already been down and it's been ticked down for a couple seconds now so every second that passes means s2a are gonna have to go for this one a little more carefully objects does open it up and he gets two as well taunt does get taken down but the retake coming in pretty strong right now for s2a it's a two versus two hp low on that is his esports track does actually get a frag and i think he's just playing Bait here, observes he can't do anything. He does find a frag, but Trax ends up shutting him down. So Hammers Esports, they pick up the pistol round. They get that bomb plant down as well. And so they're going to be able to buy in the second round. That aggression coming up from Hammers Esports is basically what I think we need to see consistently. If they're able to maintain this round after round after round, especially on the breach side, then I, I, they, it's going to be pretty much their game. I know S2A, they're probably playing it a little bit too safe there on that pistol round. Oh, and they're going the wrong way. At least that's what's showing in my map. It's a little bit blurry, but everybody's going over to B site, and it looks like Hammers is going over to A, and here they are. They're coming back. It's a full push, and they didn't see anyone there. S2-8, well, Blue does find that first frag, which is, it is hard, but I don't think they're going to be able to do anything else there. Tao, after finding the first, they are going to get shut down. The oh, hammer is actually planted. taking a bit of casualty. It's a three versus four. But finally, Menace, he does get shut down. Observes, Taunt, and Tao left over. And a three versus three should be pretty easy cleanup here for Hammers Esports. As near as he does take down Observes. And once again, we'll be seeing that of Hammers Esports converting. I Well, Trax actually does get taken down. Time to find another frag here. No, he can't. That would have been a little bit shaky for <laughs> Hammers. But still, that's the way they make it costly. They take down three players from Hammers Esports. Still able to buy, but you can see Jake just going to opt for the SA-58 once again. S2A, not the best buy coming into this round. Four SA-58s, while they are deadly, I think they would prefer the AUGs that Elus has instead of the SA-58s. Same S2A going and spreading out a little bit more. Um, Hammers has been caught out. They're rushing together. They know everybody's there. Let's see if S2A can go ahead and come back and probably prevent them from entering, from reaching that line. And it looks like Hammers ends up going through. Yeah, the, the, the hold though coming very strong here from S2A. You can see HP is low though for Taunt. So Taunt and Elus. Last two players standing, Jake and Mirzi as well. On their side, they're going to have to pull this one back. And they are rotating all the way back over towards mid. You can see Elus is going to hear them. Surely no. I think they avoid the sound cues. And so it's going to be the fight here. Taunt is going to have to face off against Mirzi. Whoever wins this one. It's going to be Taunt, and so a 1 versus 2. Jake now with the SA-58. I don't think he knows of a loose crawling around over towards Vents. It's that of Taunt, actually. He's going to have to come up here. And he is low, though, so oh. he's going to find that early frag, and the bomb is going to go down, but right in front of a loose, and a loose is oh. going to deny the bomb plant. <laughs> so 
It's the way they pick up the first round. They deny the bomb plant. And that's a perfect start for them on their coalition side. <laughs> that must have been. Ah, uh, I was shaking. Um, just, uh, wow. Just having them crawl out of vents and seeing them right there plant the bomb. is like, oopsie, it's not me. I'm not doing <laughs> you hate this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're playing the bomb and someone pops out from vents, uh, I like, would not be happy. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, well, this happened. So we'll just look at the next round. But Hammers Esports, you can see mostly pistols on their side. Mirzi does offer the armor and the AK. Interestingly enough, you can see Jake has more money, but still opts to save it. Does find a frag though with it, so it is effective thus far. Tau does get shut down, and here's he actually might want to throw that AK over to a teammate that might have more HP than him. That might be the move here, but he's going to maintain it. So how will they go about this taunt? Let's find the frag first on the tracks, so... Four versus four. It should be S2A's round. As that one AK is taken out, and so is Frost. Jake and Erupt now left in the two versus four. That should not be possible for them as Taunt just slowly beats at their HP. And as you can see, Erupt. Well, it does actually find a frag, Jake. Very smart, but Erupt eventually taken down, and so should Jake in the next couple Coalition of seconds wins. as well. Shut out of the round, and S2A, they tie it up. This is looking to be a pretty close game so far. Only round five, but still, it could be further away. So Mercy Sports should probably start spreading out a little bit more and probably maintaining their distance between the players. Um, and they, they're going collectively to one site, which is, you know, had been working out for them well, but I think S2A already picked up on that strategy. Um, and there they are. They're starting to spread out a little bit more. They dropped the bomb. They left the bomb behind. Um... I think they did only because it's starting to blur on my end and I can't really see if it's a if there's a yellow or it's a white. And I think it's just the yeah, it's a little bomb by itself. Um so they're peeking out their angles, they're being patient with this and just waiting for S2A to reveal themselves. If not, they're gonna start crawling in slowly. Yeah, hammers have been pretty good at punishing this early aggression here, Tao. Not gonna opt to just peek, but he's gonna grab a teammate for the double peek, and they fall back, both of them actually, and maintain some closure here on the B bomb site. It is under siege by some of these grenades. You can see Hammers Esports want to take control of it, but the bomb, like you said, still over towards that top mid area. No one's picked it up yet. I think they're finally going over towards it now, but it is gonna be this B hit eventually. Most of the players have actually rotated over towards B from S2A. This is going to be a very hectic push from Hammers Esports. He's down to the 35 second mark. Mirzi initiates a fight, but he loses it to Obs. It's tracked, so trades out for Taunt. And Tao is able to get a frag. So these kills coming in the flurry of both directions, but it ends up being in favor of S2A. And Jake has to clutch on his own, has the AK. Has a new skin as well. Very nice from him, but he's gonna have to go he's fully blinded right now. Can't really see much, but finally regains his vision. Eight seconds left on the clock, and well, there shouldn't be much he can do. He just wants to watch the guy before the time ends, so he does do that, and well, he'll get some money now instead of not getting any money and dying after time. So it was smart for him to peek up and sacrifice his life. But S2A, they gained the lead now. This is the first time they've had the lead. Still pretty early on to see what Hammers actually can do about that, though. Like, they were being really aggressive the first couple of rounds. They're holding back a little bit more. Maybe they should stick with that aggression. They seem to be doing really, really well for them um, in the beginning, but S2A did, you know, catch them out. Um, and it seems like they're going to be doing another aggressive aggressive push right now to uh, B site here, but S2A is just ready for them. S2A are ready for them, but... Hammers have rotated all the way around back. You can see Observes, he's very close up over towards mid now. If he catches a couple players off, he finds one. He sprints, Trey transfers actually, and gets another damage onto Erupt as well, but not the kill. So Elus, now the information is known for this side of S2A. The damage as well has been done to Hammers Esports. So this should be a pretty convincing round for S2A. Elus is playing... 
Pretty good off angle. Spots the gun barrel. First he doesn't get the kill. He shoots and reveals his position. And now Erupt is going to be able to pick up that AUG. Tucks down another as well. Frost does the drive-by. Taunt can't get anything done there. And all of a sudden, a three versus four turned into a three versus two. As to a, they've lost control of this A bomb site as well. Unless Tau comes in for the plant. Can he deny the bomb plant? No, he can't. They plant. Tactically, they get the bomb plant down, but Erupt does get shut out of the round. So this is a very, very interesting post-plant position for both of these teams. You can see Frost and Jake hmm. all over towards this intel area. Jake does take one down, and Tau, he's going to come in for this retake, but it is that of Frost sitting over towards intel. And Jake, he's going to have to do all the work here. If Tau can take one oh, down, wow. he spots one out. Yeah, he takes down Frost. And can he go for the straight defuse right now? I don't believe so. I believe the bomb is coming out in the open, so if he gets spotted, he will get shut down, and yes, he does. Jake denies him the defuse, and they're all tied up once again. This game is going to be so close. Definitely a lot more action than we had seen from previous game. It's pretty much neck to neck right now. It's still, I know it's still pretty pretty early on, but Hammers is trying to hold their own. S2A is pushing back. Um, we're seeing a lot of action. Really, We're seeing a lot of uh, trading going on as well. Um, I'm not really too sure exactly what S2A needs to go ahead and do. They probably need to start holding their own a little bit better, trying to capitalize on the mistakes of Hammers Esports. You did see a couple of them being uh, revealing their position and not being able to get a shot off onto Hammers, and Hammers ended up... Um, getting a kill off of S2A. Well, S2A, they got the early pick in this round. Trax, they get taken down. And, well, Frost, he answers back in return. Tau, shut out of the round. So three versus, or four versus four. And they've paused it just a bit. Their initiatives have been slowed down a little bit. See Hammer's going to cross over to the orange position or the sandwich position and Somehow freely not taking any damage. It is a loose though. He's gonna have to come out and do a lot of the damage. He's gonna have to hold on as best he can as Jake finds a frag. Nate doesn't convert though. Look at like one HP and a loose finds a frag. He gets a second Look as well. Observes. Mirzi, he's going to A. He's running. Was that a fake? Was that was what Yeah, I think this is a well-intentioned fake. Jake is sitting over towards B long right now, and this is a perfect play. I think they even caught me off guard, so. It is observes. If he wins this duel out, this is on the dot on the go for him. But Mirzi, he's tracking this one area. Can he get the kill? Yes, he finally finishes him off. And Elise, so low on HP right now. This doesn't look possible for him against two full HP players. There you go. <laughs> ends it off. That was a very good uh, adaptiveness, actually, from the side of Hammers. I'm not sure if that was meant to be a fake, but it ended up being a transition over to the A side. Wow. Mirzi Beautifully really executed. There. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering what Mirzi was doing. I knew he was holding the bottom on like, is he, did he stall out? Did he disconnect? What happened? Because he wasn't moving and he just, like, I just saw, like, everybody from S2A just kind of, like, continue moving past him and, you know, going through the other corridors, etc. And then all of a sudden, I just see him completely run into A. That was, that was just a, a really good move on the side of Hammers. Caught off S2A on ourselves also off guard. Um, here we have Hammers Esports uh, running um, and standing still. I wonder if they're going to try to do it again. I don't think so. I think that's a play that can probably only work once, maybe one more time towards the, the end of the, of the series here, the match here. Um, S2A is frantically looking around, trying to see if they can go ahead and bot out Hammers Esports. And it's not, you know, they're not being really successful there. But, you know, uh, taunt to see someone, but he doesn't call them out. They're starting to move. Max gets that first kill. Erupt, he pulled out his knife at the wrong time, but somehow S2A, they're actually going to answer back with two kills of their own. Frost does even it up. So it's a three versus three. Weaponry definitely favoring Hammer's Esports, and, and that shows the duel versus Menace. Maybe does take him out, but Taunt and Tao, if they can do as much damage as possible, that's more ideal. Frost, he spotted one out, and so Taunt is out of the round. Tao has get shot through. Frost might be lagging, who knows, but either way, Hammers, they pick up number five for themselves. Really nice. Again, on the side of Hammers Esports, this is the Hammers Esports that I know. Um, they're willing and they're able to go ahead and, and you know, play meticulously around, almost like a taunt. You know what I mean? They're, they're 
like jingling the bomb in front of S2A and S2A is just like peeking out and getting caught off guard. In a lot of these instances, at least in the past two rounds that we've seen, they were very aggressive uh, early on, but Hammers has been able to... What is going on right now? Fast B play. And oh my goodness, they're getting each other confused and the smokes erupt! Two kills! He's just jumping around and that that was the most chaotic thing I've seen. What what just happened there? Observes left alone now, and I'm sure he's also confused. Where did his teammates go? That round, just a flurry <laughs> of smoke grenades and flash grenades all onto the B bomb site and Hammers Esports. They just absolutely paraded on S2A. The defense was taken out. They were confused too. So Observes will try his best for a retake, but he's getting flanked every second of in the passes so he gets shot out from the side jake does take him down but yeah that was that was an interesting round hammer is a force to be reckoned with not being able to be how do you say it's they're unpredictable right now they're showing a, a patient side they're showing a wild and crazy side they're showing an aggressive uh you know uh, the pushes here and there they're showing um a little bit more variety in what we've seen um previously in other tournaments with them and here we are again Having Hammers Esports spread out along with us too, eh? Patiently just, you know, we'll see what's going on. Trying to make a call, trying to figure out what's going to happen, where they're going to go. And S2A is holding back, securing the sites a little bit more, at least the quarters as well. Yeah, Menace and Tyler are going to have a big deal of work to do. Trax does take a bit of damage to his face, but it's still going to be a heavy amount of Hammers players coming in here. As Tal is going to with the flash. He does get flashed, though, even though he plays anti. And so now Menace sitting over towards this HQ position. He also gets flashed and Hammers using their utility perfectly. Mirzi as well, while he is low, has done a lot of good damage as well onto the S2A players. And so he takes down the loose eventually. Taunt has been planted. Nothing he can do is object also gets shut down. A clean round here. No players from Hammers dying. And so this looks very convincing for them. If they can get the eighth round, they will be on track here for a once again also dominant victory. We said it was close, and that was in the <laughs> early game. If they pull off round number eight, well, this would be a little bit hard for S2A. I still think S2A could probably, you know, get a couple of rounds, but as we predicted, I do think that this matchup will end up going to Hammers Esports unless S2A is able to secure a little bit more of those kills. Again, probably, it, it, I mean, Zero is one of those... Oh, never mind. There goes... Hammers is forced to take down too. Observes and Tao and Menace uh, fall. And then Taunt ends up getting that trade on erupt. And now it's three versus two, though. Full health on both sides. Both on both sides, but now, well, Taunt <laughs> does get shut out. So the bomb, even though they don't have it, is not of the key essence for them. You can see Elus is alone over towards this Intel position. He's going to try and do his best to, to spot out players, but. He's going to actually take down the bomb. Mirzi, he runs with the bomb behind him. Somehow this positioning favors a loose. I don't know if his barrel can be spotted right now, but definitely caught Hammers off guard. And Frost, I think Luce is still over towards Intel. Is that why you should always oh. check your corners also? Exactly. That's why you should always check. They, they do recover Hammers, but still a little bit wobbly for, for them towards the end there. Saints to Angels, though. Going to be a little bit tough going into this last round. If Hammers pick up round number nine, well, I think S2A will have difficulty when it comes to the half switch. I think they can, I, like I said again, I think they can take off a couple of rounds uh, on the side of Hammers, but Hammers being very unpredictable, they're, uh, they, you know, they go left and then all of a sudden they go right. They're able to go ahead and do those rotations once they see that there isn't an opening if there's a complete block around. And here we are meeting up right now and, oof, massacre right now on the side of uh, Hammers as everyone starts falling one by one likewise. So, yeah, finally, finally, S2A, they have some success as a loose. Let's come and find this. Four, very useful. The nade <laughs> finally takes him down, Jake. But you saw how many, how much utility was deployed by hammers there. Didn't work in their favor, but typically that's a good sign that they're able to use all the utility in a coordinated manner. Jake, he doesn't have the bomb, so this makes his job infinitely harder. His taunt as well on the other side of the vents. He's just crouching as well, so Jake probably is in a good position, but he does get shut out. So S2A, they are 
half the score of hammers as we move on into the second half here we'll see how the pistol round goes for each of these teams hammer's gonna have to definitely um hold uh the sites very very well if not s2a is able it's going to be able to go ahead and break through um i wonder if we're going to see a little bit more of that type of gameplay though like we saw from hammers is s2a going to stay together are they going to spread out a little bit more are they going to just you know try to fish for information here and there um but on a pistol round it looks like they're just going to a side here but they're getting caught out by uh by hammers well, Hammers are losing their duels so far. You can see Mirzi low on HP. S2A should have control of the A bomb site as Erupt. He's going to be playing with Jake. Oh, nice shot there from Jake. Another one from Erupt as well. S2A, their hit is falling apart. This is two versus four. Now turned into a two versus two. And Mirzi comes in from behind, able to shut one out. And S2A looking dire right now. Tau, one versus two, not able to get anything done. So Hammers... Pick up their ninth round, and they are only four away from picking up the victory for themselves. Beautifully done by by Hammers right there. S2A trying to secure. I, I just feel kind of bad for Tao because he was like, left, right, where do I go? Do I go over here? Where are they? I don't know what. And he was just like, no, not enough. Um, also, <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you, you saw him, right? How he was like, ah. Yeah, kind of he was there. rocking a hard place. Yeah. But S2A, does that take their own? I hope that name wasn't their own. I don't think it was their own. But, well, Frost, he's going to be able to take down Menace and Erupt as well, taking down Observe. So, S2A have really not been able to get the ball rolling here on the breach side. And the bomb that's even dropped. Yeah, that's, that's unfortunate for them. Looks like it will be the test round for Hammers and... Are we going to see another drive-by headshot here? Looks like that might be the case. Busy interrupt. Also chime in for a couple more frags and hammers. All players staying alive. More money in the bank for them. And, well, if we look at the scoreboard, I mean, I want to see, yeah, tracks 14 and 11. That is very positive for them. Things have definitely slowed down on the side of S2A. Um, they did really well in the beginning. Did they end up losing their focus, perhaps? Like we said, this is a new lineup that isn't that you know. Last time we were playing, uh, we had seen other players in this in this team. Um, maybe they just need to develop their synergy a little bit more. They seem to be good. Like they're in the right place at the right time because they are getting a lot of kills on the side of Hammers and Sports, but like now. Like, right here. He was able to get two down. Go ahead. Observes. I mean, our double player is now finally able to get something. And this is a very hectic fight. It's now down to a one versus one. Menace has the vector versus Mirzi. And this is an AUG versus an SA. Should be favoring Mirzi now, but we'll see what happens. He's able to win this one out. Mirzi catches him off guard and Menace. Does get shut out. So hammers on round eleven now. S two A, their chances are slowly slipping away, or actually quickly slipping away round <laughs> by round. Hammers have only two more that separate them from victory, and well, they'll be playing IFL tomorrow if they win. Mm -hmm. A lot of these rounds, uh, or well, they'll be playing IFL on Sunday, wouldn't they? That's when the grand finals are. Oh. Uh, we have to play the winners finals first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> so um, playing it tomorrow, but he's gonna run out. He just gets spotted out. Oh, he gets the knife. What? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. What is happening, Jake? <laughs> Finds the frag. Tao comes in for one, but uh, okay. So he ran past him and then got the knife on the. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's that's about how how good the game is going for S two A right now. That yeah. this is indicative. So. It's it's rough for them. I think Hammers have pulled off the victory here. I'm pretty sure. But we'll have to see if they are able to close it out. I'm sure they will be, but... It is uh, S2A on their last limbs. And you can see... They're just pushing out tracks and Frost. They're just pushing out over towards Taunt. Taunt does get taken out eventually. And, well, Hammers, they can afford to take these fights right now. It, what is happening? The 360 spin around <laughs> as a loose last player standing. Does take one down, but Jake and Mirzi are going to shut him out. 13-4, to four, both maps going 13-4, to four, funny enough. And 
We thought this game was going to be quick once again. It is going to be, well, once again. Well, we thought this game was going to be close. The game yeah. ended up quick and hammers. Yeah. They take the cake. So tomorrow, your grand or not grand? Well, you got me saying grand final. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see Hammers Esports playing IFL tomorrow in the winners final, and for the losers finals, we'll be seeing Xenocide versus that of S two A. So those are going to be the players we'll be seeing. The teams will be seeing. And well, S two A versus Xenocide. That's a best of three. I do believe. The other game, which is IFL versus Hammers, that will be a best of one. So yes. just keeping it like that. And then we'll have the winners finals as well as the losers finals and the losers round one and then the losers finals. So yes. the, basically by the end of tomorrow, you'll be able to see who will be in the grand finals on Sunday. On the grand finals on Sunday, I'm super excited to see what's going to happen because it's still anybody's game. Just because S2A and Xenocide didn't probably do so well today, they still have a shot at getting that championship, at getting that, you know, that big prize full, getting those event cases and getting that highly coveted uh, weapon skin, which we have seen. And I, I wish I could have the, my hands on that. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We will catch you guys tomorrow. You guys can follow um, us on our social media channels. I am at Sapphire Sky GG on Twitter. And Mark, where can people follow you? Also on CoolMark482. Is that correct? Yeah, just read it off the screen. <laughs> yeah, I also got to follow at Wadi Wadi. He's the man that's yes. been all of the all the stuff right here. But want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, the the folks helping us out, Geyser, Critical Ops League, and obviously Critical Force for making the game. So once again, a huge shout out to everyone, and and thank you all for tuning in. You could be doing a lot of different things, but this is a Friday. Uh, evening afternoon wherever you might be and you are choosing to tune in here so we really do appreciate it tomorrow we will be seeing these games go off as well i believe it's noon pst but correct, correct. me if i yeah, it could, no, yeah it is 12. i think i think it's 12 p.m pst 3 p.m eastern time if you live on the east coast and you can do the math otherwise in between but until then ladies and gentlemen this has been a nice match to cast tomorrow will be a much longer day we'll have two best of threes and the best of one for you all so we will say adieu from everyone and thank you for tuning in thanks guys catch you tomorrow